Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie. Today is Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023, and this is episode 281. Welcome to those of you watching on while it's live, and welcome to those of you watching on replay, my replay warriors. Tonight we're going to be doing two quick and easy projects using the Zoo Crew Suite. We're going to do this panel card here, and then this cute little treat holder that is sized to fit a York peppermint patty. I think I shared this project back in 2018. It was a special request from a fan of mine, Donna. So I decided to remix it. And the Zoo Crew Suite is so stinking adorable. Believe it or not, I did not color the alligator or the, I think that's a skunk. <laughs> um, that's actually the designer series paper doing the work for us. So welcome. Brian, are you ready for your cameo? Brian is watching for your questions and comments tonight. If you do have a question during tonight's live stream, be sure to put a cue before that question that will make it into my cue so that I can fo focus on tonight's projects. And then I will answer all of your questions at the end during our Q&A segment. And I'll stay on live till I answer all of your questions that come through. I hope you guys are having a wonderful and blessed week. When you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. The easiest way to shop with me is to use my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically add my current host code so you can earn Pixie Perks if you're going to place a big order of $150 or more. You don't want to add the host code because you're going to earn stamp and rewards. You will also earn Pixie Perks from me as well. We are in the midst of the brand new 2023 to 2022 annual catalog that launched on Tuesday. That was yesterday, right? May 2nd, 2023. You guys are loving the new catalog. I love seeing what you guys are ordering. Some of my favorites made it into your shopping carts. Uh, I love when the new an annual catalog drops. We've got new colors with a color refresh and the five new in colors. So lots of fun things. Ordering is still a little bit delayed from the combination of our big sales day on April 4th. They're all caught up with those orders. Then we had a free shipping day on April 19th. I think today they were wrapping up ship shipment for orders from April 19th. They're working as fast as they can. So there's a little bit of a delay with shipping, but they're getting to your orders as quickly as possible. So I've got a couple of show and tell things for you tonight. Um, really quickly, here's a sneak peek of tonight's projects that we're going to do. Quick and easy. As many of you know, this past weekend, we celebrated my dad. Um, we had a, a close-knit burial at the uh, cemetery Saturday morning and then had a celebration of life for him Saturday night. So I wanted to show you a couple of things from that. Just real quick, this was the program from my dad's service, and this was a quote that he had paraphrased, but never let schooling interfere with education. So that was um, uh, one of the quotes I wanted to attribute to him. And then um, this poem on the back, if you guys have never read it before, Death is Nothing at All by Henry Scott Holland. It's something that my mom had shared back 25 years ago. Um, as part of her thank you notes, and it's just a, a very thoughtful poem. And that's my mom and dad there. But we had a wonderful service. The kids all participated with us. Uh, let's see. Lily, I'm trying to think of what all the kids had said. Nolan got up and said, Bapa gave me great device, but he meant to say great advice. It was so sweet. They were so brave. They stood up in front of the microphone. Lily said, um, I, I love how Bapa supported my creativity, and Anthony said I loved when Bapa went to the air show with me. That's my nephew Anthony, and my niece Isabella said I loved when Bapa came to my birthday party. So they were super sweet and brave and wonderful during the service. Brian read, uh, a po or Brian read um, Psalm 23, right? And my sister-in-law, Anne, read a beautiful poem called Remember Me by Margaret Mead. It was a wonderful celebration. And then my dad's favorite snack was popcorn. So I went to Etsy and had these bags created. Uh, Cardinals appear when angels are near in loving memory of John Ferlito. So I thought that was kind of a fun way to remember him because popcorn was his absolute favorite. So it was a wonderful celebration. Wonderful weekend, uh, spending time with family and friends despite the circumstances. 
uh, lots of really wonderful people that we got to say hello to and hug and spend some time with. I am exhausted, so we'll see how many words I trip over tonight, both physically and mentally, but I'm excited to be here with you tonight, and I love this suite of products. Now, one more show and tell I wanted to show you. It's the, what is it called? The um, alphabet, I don't remember. In um, kindergarten, first grade, the kids do the alphabet countdown, I think it is. Today was the letter J, which was joke day. So these are the jokes that Nolan took to school. What do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. <laughs> How do you make a tissue dance? Put some boogie in it. <laughs> and then how do you talk to a giant? You use big words. So that's what he took to school today. He's our first grader. All right, why don't we go ahead and jump into tonight's projects again. If you've got questions tonight, put a cue before that question and then that will tee up the questions at the end of the live stream tonight. Let's go ahead and do the 3D project. And actually, I have a honeydew item for you. Can you go get the thing off the printer? <laughs> Sorry, the template. Um, so this project, I'm going to go ahead and slide it off. It's got a belly band here, and that's that beautiful lemon lime twist, which has come back to us. And it just uses a four inch by six inch piece of designer series paper. And it's one of these smaller York peppermint patties. Thank you. And let me see if I can tell you the size on this one. I don't remember the size. <laughs> I don't think there's a size on these. It's the smaller ones that you can get in a bag, um, but this project is sized to fit that. Now you can fit other things here in, in here as well. I think those uh, Snickers brownie bites, which I haven't seen in a while, I think that they're still out. That would likely fit in here as well. Maybe some chocolate coins. Um, Hershey's Nuggets, I think, would fit a couple of those. But again, it was sized to fit uh, a York peppermint patty. But again, only four by six is all you need, which means you can get one, two, three, four, five, six out of a, yeah, six out of a sheet of 12 by 12. So super economical. And then just a sweet little belly band. I love it. So cute. And that little skunk with the binoculars and the birdie on his head. You're too wonderful. So super fun. All right. So we're going to take a four inch by six inch piece of designer series paper. And you're going to want to cut that into landscape. So uh, this pattern, while I'm using the black and white side, it uh, technically has a direction to it. So landscape, you want to go four inches by six inches with it in landscape. Oh boy, I didn't write the measurements down. So... <laughs> I do have a template for you. Um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead with this in landscape. And if your pattern were directional, you wanna go top to bottom here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and score this at two inches, two and three quarters, four and three quarters, and five and a half. Again, two, two and three quarters, four and three quarters, five and a half. I'm going to turn it clockwise and we're going to go ahead and score this at three quarters and three. Okay, so I'm going to repeat one more time. Two, two and three quarters, four and three quarters, five and a half. Rotate clockwise and score at three quarters and three. All right, next I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines. And then let me bring in the template here that I left on the printer. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> And my paper snips, here we go. All right, so we are gonna keep this top section here. If we've got this on the outside pattern, it's kind of curving this way. This top section is what we're gonna keep. Now this is an inch in width. Down here is three quarters of an inch in width. So just pay attention to that, the section that's a little bit wider. We're gonna keep just this top section and remove everything else. So what I like to do is flip this backwards, or I should say flip it backwards and upside down. I don't know. I'm gonna cut up this vertical score line. The first one in from the left, and I'm flipped to the back side. And then I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn and we're gonna remove all of this section here. So I'm just gonna cut right up that score line. All 
And we're on the back side, so when I flip this over, we've left this one panel here, okay? So next I'm gonna cut up all the vertical score lines along the bottom, and for me it's easier to see those on the back side. I'm gonna cut up the vertical score line and stop at that horizontal score line. And then I'm actually going to remove this lower right corner. And as I do that, I'm also gonna come in and miter cut on this little half inch section along the side. So when I say miter cut, I'm just cutting a little angle cut out of it. Doing okay? So we've got that little half inch section along the side. And then we've sort of released all of these sections here along the bottom. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and fold the larger sections out of the way. You can just do one at a time if it's easier for you to hold. And we're gonna come in and miter cut these tabs. The little, uh, they're three quarters of an inch square. Like so. The last thing we need to do on this is just round the corners here to give it a nice little finish. And I've just got the retired detailed trio, but any corner rounder punch will do. Like so. Okay, so again, four inches by six inches. You can get six of these out of a 12 by 12. And that's what the template looks like. I will have project sheets posted for both of tonight's projects before the end of the day tomorrow. And that'll be linked in the description of the video. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is just flip this over here. We're on the back side of the paper. I'm gonna grab my liquid glue and I'm gonna go ahead and fold on the second score line from the left, just so I can kind of isolate this tab here. I'm gonna put liquid glue And then I'm gonna fold on the first section from the right and just press that flat, using our score lines to line everything up in the right spot, like so, okay? So it's starting to form our little treat holder here. Now I'm gonna focus on the bottom. Where the tab is, that's actually the back side. I'm gonna kind of fold sections out of the way, but fold the two tabs in and then I'm gonna go, I'm giggling because I see that question about the gift card. I'm gonna put liquid glue on the tabs and then liquid glue on the front flap. Okay, so you don't need to worry about putting glue on the back flap. I'm gonna go ahead and fold the back flap and then the front flap. I know, I was giggling. The question about the gift card. The one above. Oh, Andrew's here. Hey, Andrew. And then the one above, I was thinking that as well. Oh yeah, which one? The Using the other side? Mm -hmm. Like having the animals. Oh yeah. Hi Christy. <laughs> All right, so folded that all into place. I did kind of just use my flat surface here to kind of press the bottom down. So that is the basics of the treat box. We're gonna go ahead and put our treat in and believe it or not, I only have one York peppermint patty because you ate them all. Just kidding, I ate them all. <laughs> I don't know, do you have any York peppermint patties? This one was high. Oh, you don't like them. More for me. All right, so York peppermint patty, I'm just gonna go ahead and slip that in there. And then I'm just gonna take my index fingers here and pinch on either side, like so. Just kind of pinching that in place. And I love how that looks on the side. It's just a cute little look on the side there. So in order to hold this together, we're actually gonna use a belly band, but there's a couple of different ways that you can close this. One, you could use a Velcro dot. You could use magnets, although this is gonna have a little bit of um, tension because of the way that we're folding the cardstock to pinch like that. So what you might find is that magnets will pop off after time. So um, uh, a Velcro dot would work great. I like to use a belly band or even tying ribbon around this treat holder. So we're gonna go ahead and do belly band and I'm just gonna take a one inch by six inch strip of the lemon lime twist cardstock. So again, that's one by six. And we're actually gonna hide the seam on this. So here's the front of our treat holder that's got the flap. I'm gonna start by kind of putting that kind of in the center there. And then I'm gonna just 
uh, hand fold it over the edges. So I'm gonna fold here. I'm not pinching this too tightly because I do want this to be a little bit loose so that we can slide it on and off. And I'm just folding around those edges there along the bottom like that. So I'm just gonna pinch and then I'm gonna come in and fold and burnish with my bone folder just to make those folds nice and crisp. And I'm also kind of straightening them because see how it's a little bit cattywampus there? Just lining up those edges and then burnish. So now what I can do is close the box and then I'm gonna actually glue, does it matter? I'm thinking. I'm gonna do the top flap over the bottom there. But what I'm gonna do is take liquid glue and I'm kind of pinching it at the top and the bottom doing this one-handed here. <laughs> I'm gonna put, let's see, one little strip of liquid glue here on the top flap. I see this is tucked under the bottom flap. And then a little strip of glue here. That's just so that when these close, you're gonna have coverage with the glue, like so. Now you're gonna have to be a little bit patient to hold that liquid glue into place. I give it a few seconds, and then I'm actually gonna slide it off the treat box and then turning that the wrong way and then hold it into place a little bit more. So now that it's kind of stuck, I'm going to slide it off and then just pinch a little bit more here. Like so. Okay, that's going to be our little belly band there. Go ahead and slide that back on. May have made mine a little bit too tight. There we go. That's gonna hold that close. Now, the seam, we're actually gonna hide with our sentiment and our little skunk. So uh, next I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of stamping. And I probably should have showed you what we're using today. Now that I can show you the inside of the catalog, we're on pages 46 and 47. This is the Zoo Crew Suite, so it comes with a stamp and die bundle, designer series paper, and then a ribbon combo pack. And I'm gonna use stays on ink because I like how sharp the black is. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the sentiment. Let me show you that stamp set. Zany Zoo bundle. We're gonna use You're Too Wonderful. And then here are the dies that come with it. So what we're gonna use for today or for this project is the banner die and the skunk with the bird on its head. <laughs> All right, so scrap paper is just basic white. Again, stays on ink. And then I'm gonna go ahead and line up the banner. I kind of loved how the banner lines up with the way that the sentiments kind of angle, like so. So we're gonna put the sentiment down towards the lower right. And I'm gonna grab some post-it tape. And hold that into place and we'll run that through the die cutting machine. We're gonna kind of maximize our cuts here. I've also cut from the designer series paper. This is already looks like it's colored with stamp and blends, but this is the designer series paper. And then this die will work to cut out our skunk and the little birdie. So get some more post-it tape here. Just gonna line up the die. Like so. I'd like to do two pieces of the post-it tape to anchor that. And I'll bring in the stamp and cut boss machine. run these guys through. I did forget to mention the mini Boho Blue machine is actually available for customers to purchase. Stampin' Up! has a little bit of extra stock, so if you want a pretty blue mini machine, that's now available in the online store. All right, so we got these two guys. Just 
just removing that post-it tape. Oh, that skunk is so cute. Look at him, already ready to go. Let's get these out of here. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is adhere this banner, kind of covering that uh, seam there on the lemon lime twist. I'm gonna bring it a little bit down towards the bottom because of the height of the skunk here to kind of balance that on, out on the treat holder. So I'm gonna take liquid glue. And again, that strip is an inch wide, so I don't wanna go more than an inch wide with my adhesive here on the back. I'm just gonna go ahead and lay that here and press that into place. Again, it's liquid glue, so give it a few seconds. There we go. And then we're gonna be a little strategic about dimensionals. I think I can actually just do the big dimensionals, which Looking for my other sheet, we'll just grab a new one. <laughs> Two of them should work. And I like to just kind of inspect the back of it and figure out where are we gonna be placing this guy? So I think one on the back of his tail and then one right next to it. Kind of like that on the back. You don't want to stick the skunk to the treat holder itself because then you won't be able to slide the belly band off. So just be careful when you're putting your dimensionals down. And then we're gonna put this guy oops, here. Let's hope that my, okay, good. We're good with the dimensionals. I just took a peek at that. And then I think it needs one more thing, a little rhinestone. I had to bust into a new pack of rhinestones today. My favorite bling. I'm just gonna pop a large one right there. And there we have our Zoo Crew gift bag, size to fit, what is it? A, <laughs> a York Peppermint Patty. I was trying to say something totally different than that. It's super cute. This would be so fun with so many different, different patterns of paper for different occasions. This one, obviously I chose Zoo Crew, uh, but I just love the way this treat holder comes together and it uses a minimal amount of designer series paper so you can make a bunch of them in a short amount of time. And again, you can fit other things in here as well. I know cash will fit. Um, not a gift card, but cash. <laughs> so there we go. All right. So let's jump into to the coordinating card. We are going to start with a piece of thick basic white. And this measures four and a quarter by 11 inches. And I've got it scored in half at five and a half inches. I'm gonna turn, well, it's really hard to see that on the camera. I'm gonna turn the valley score line into a mountain fold and burnish. And look how, how, how far off that is. Sometimes the cardstock comes cut in a way that it's way off. So let me show you a little trick. Get that lined up. Use your um, Simply Scored or your paper trimmer. I'm actually gonna just line up the edges of that paper right here in the corner. Kind of butt it up to the edge here and butt it up to the edge there. And actually it may be easier to do it this way. So I can get my bone folder in there. And I'm just gonna kind of fold, make sure that's lined up right. But I use those edges to get those edges lined up. Or I should say I use the edges of the paper trimmer to get the edges of the paper lined up so that's lined up the right way, okay? All right, so that's the base, thick basic white. And then I've got a piece of basic white that measures three and three quarters by five. And this is gonna be sort of our base layer here to give that nice matte finish on the front of the card. And then I've got a piece of designer series paper that measures three and a quarter inches by three and a half, I think. This is why I need to write measurements down. Yep, three and a quarter by three and a half, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece into seven eighths of an inch strips. So, it's currently in portrait. I'm gonna turn it to landscape. So this is the three and a quarter inch side and we're gonna cut the three and a half inch side into seven eighths of an inch strips. I'm gonna have four seven eighths inch strips. 
that measure seven eighths by three and a quarter. And because we're sort of less than an inch, I'm using my ruler here on the right side of my paper trimmer. And if you had a pattern that you were pretty particular about as far as lining up our strips, you just want to pay attention when you, after you cut them in which order you lay them down. So we're going to glue our designer series paper like so. This is um, inspired by Jamie Babersee's card. I love the way that she did the card with the four panels. Looking for my glue here. Um, so again, these are seven eighths inch strips. We're going to glue these down onto the three and three quarters by five inch layer. And I'm going to start with one. And we're going to have a quarter of an inch of the basic white on either side, right, left, and then from the top, like so. Okay, that's going to be our good starting point there. And then every piece after that, we're going to layer about an eighth of an inch down. This would be beautiful with designer series paper of all different colors and patterns. Really great layout for our card. And then what you're left with is some space for a sentiment down there. I know this pattern is quite dizzying, but once we add the crocodile or alligator, how do you know the difference? Do you know? How do you tell the difference? <laughs> uh, I'm going to grab the sentiment here. Now, because I am not using the Stamparatus or the stamp -a majig I'm going to actually try to hand stamp this without getting it crooked. So a little tip for you. I like to have um, just a scrap piece of grid paper and this is just a quarter sheet of grid paper I just cut my grid paper into quarters and I'm going to go ahead and grab my ink which I put back here now I typically I don't know I stick my stamps to the clear blocks in a weird way sometimes I put them on an angle because then I don't it's just easier for me to see exactly where I'm stamping when it's on an angle this stamp is probably a little too small for this clear block but I'm making it work so I'm just going to make sure I'm looking at the sentiment. This is saying something great to celebrate you. And I'm going to flip this over to a cleaner side. I'm going to ink it up and stamp it on my grid paper just so that I kind of know how I need to line it up. And uh oh, you're laughing in the chat. <laughs> oh, okay. I think that's actually pretty straight on the grid line. So yeah, stamp it on scrap grid paper just before, or obviously use a stamp positioning tool or something like the stamp on my jig. Oh, I'm gonna hold my breath here and hope we get this right. <laughs> please, oh please, yay! There we go. Isn't that cute? Perfect spot for a sentiment with that layout. Love Jamie's layout. And then we've got our cute cro crocodile or alligator riding a bicycle with a basket of flowers. Uh, I'm first going to go ahead and glue this panel down to the card base and then we'll die cut this guy. You can, you can also pop this layer up on dimensionals if you want. I love adding mats like this to basic white because it just takes it up a notch like so. Okay. So now let's grab some more. You want to check on the kiddos? I'm going to grab the coordinating die for this. Again, this makes it so easy. Now you will run out of crocodiles on the designer series paper. And the great thing is that you've got the stamp set. You can create as many of these guys as you want to with 
uh, memento ink and Stampin' Blends. Change the colors. But I believe every pattern in the designer series paper, at least one of the animals can be die cut with one of the dies in the set, which is awesome. Others can be fussy cut. So this one, we're going to do a kind of a combination of regular dimensionals and mini dimensionals. Let's see. And one on his tail there. There we go. All right, then this guy, I'm gonna put right about, let's see, where did I do it on there? <laughs> right about there. There we go. And then one little rhinestone to finish it off. And there we have our Zoo Crew panel card. That's so cute. I love him with the little bicycle. No one's all good. Okay. So there are tonight's coordinating projects. We've got a gift bag, treat holder, size of a York peppermint patty, and then this panel card, all featuring the Zoo Crew suite, which again you can find on pages 46 and 47 of the new annual catalog. Yay. All right. So now let's go ahead and jump into Q and a for the night. Get your questions teed up again. If you've got questions for me tonight, put a Q in front of your question that will get into my Q. Let's see. All right, Charlene kicking us off. I have a punch that has a broken latch. It did not fall out. A piece of plastic broke off, so I removed the latch. Can I get a replacement? Yes. Reach out to your demonstrator and uh, they can work with Stampin' Up! to work on a replacement. There is a 90-day return policy, but we can see what can be done um, in that situation with a broken latch. So yeah. All right. Did I start numbering my episodes from my very first YouTube video? Uh, Linda, from my very first live stream. So I did videos long before I started live streaming. I don't remember if it was six or seven years ago. I feel like the years have um, vanished during uh, the pandemic. But yes, my number, my episode numbers are from my very first live stream, not my very first video. So I've got lots of pre-recorded videos as well. What's that? She said you. Oh, with Virginia's question. Mm -hmm. Got it. Have I made a box for ink pens? I'm noodling on that. I don't think I've made a box for the Stampin' Blends, but not for ink pens. Um, so Joan, feel free to send me an email at support at the Obviously pens come in many shapes and sizes. So just let me know if you have something in particular in mind and I'll keep it in mind for a future project. Um, love baby. So uh, on my website, thepaperpixie.com slash catalogs, you can see information about how you can get a complimentary catalog from me. Um, customers who've ordered with me in the last six months uh, have placed a $25 order or more with me in the last six months. Get a free comp complimentary catalog from me. All you need to do is place a $25 order with me and I will send you the link to request the catalog to ship to you for free. Otherwise, if you don't plan on placing an order soon, you can always just cover the shipping for the catalog, but the catalog itself will be free. Let's see. 
<laughs> go for it, Linda. We Googled for them. So yeah, they're not Nolan's jokes. <laughs> he did not come up with them himself. But those are the three favorites that he picked from our Google search of great kid jokes. <laughs> go for it. Would a single Reese's cup fit? Michelle, that is a great question. I think some of the Reese's cups have gotten smaller over time. Um, so it is possible. The only thing that I'm not sure about is they tend to put a lot of air in those packages. So I, you might have some difficulty there, but it wouldn't take too much to resize the measurements to fit a Reese's cup. <laughs> I'm putting this up for fun. Will a gift card fit? No, it will not. <laughs> I think we're trying to get this question every single week, aren't we? I love it. You guys crack me up. Carla, I did not yet. I only just ordered it on Tuesday. What was that, yesterday? I got up at two in the morning to place that order. Um, that might be part of why I'm exhausted. Uh, but I am scheduled to get that delivery tomorrow and Brian and I will get to work. Um, I am going out of town this weekend for my brother Greg's graduation, uh, but we do plan to have the product shares ready to ship out the week of May 15th, okay? Ooh, what's my record, Linda? Um, it's something over 500, I believe. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure that I've written down what the record is. Mid fives. Mid fives, that's what Brian says. <laughs> Thank you. I am Jennifer. We are going to the Norwegian fjords, a cruise th through the Norwegian fjords. We're going to channel our inner... Anna and Elsa while we're there. No, <laughs> I plan to eat and sleep. <laughs> but yes, I am going on that trip. We're really looking forward to it. Would one or two mini, mini Ghirardellis? Yes, minis for sure. And I think at least one of the regular Ghirardelli squares will fit as well. Uh, but definitely, definitely probably two minis. I don't have enough minis or any minis probably for that matter. Hold on. The mini Ghirardellis? I do have two. Hold on. I still have the peppermint bark ones. <laughs> Brian's just shaking boxes. All right, so um, two mini Ghirardellis. I'm just checking to see if I fit. Yes, they will. That's two minis. So yeah, I would actually say the regular Ghirardellis probably not, but two minis will fit. Great question. Ooh, aside from pixie-fied boxes and cards, what other craft things are you interested in? Oh gosh, there isn't really anything else at the moment. Um, during the pandemic, we got a little bit into diamond painting, me and the kids. Um, I've dabbled in a couple of things. I tried to learn how to knit. I tried to learn how to sew, <laughs> but I just couldn't get into it. Um, what else am I into? Yeah, other than that, video games. <laughs> oh, but yeah, that's not considered a craft thing. Um, so yeah, for the most part, it's just paper crafting. My one true love with crafting. Let's see. One see you later and one you see after a while. Crocodile versus alligator. I love it. Is there a simple rule of thumb on the size to cut strips to get even spacing without a lot of math? Um, good question, Vicki. So tonight when I was designing the card, um, I started by doing one inch strips and then I realized I was running out of space. So I know I wanted to have four strips. Um, and so one inch was too much. So I dialed it down to seven eighths of an inch and then it kind of worked out. So I don't know necessarily there's a rule of thumb other than you do. Well, that would be a little bit of math though, which is what you're trying to avoid. Um, with the three eighth of an inch, um, gaps that we've added here, that is basically adding three eighths of an inch to basically the full measurement of the panel. So, um, technically it's three and a quarter by three and a half. I'm thinking. I know, it's three and seven eighths, is that right? Yeah, so technically three and a quarter by three and seven eighths from here down to the bottom. 
I don't know. I'm probably not helping you there, but I basically would, I, my recommend, recommendation is just to do kind of some trial and error. Um, and it doesn't have to be an eighth of an inch. One of the things that you can do with this card is cut the strips and then kind of dry fit them to see what you like and what you don't like based on, you know, what it looks like to your eye. You know, things look differently to people's, to different people's eyes. So I don't know. I don't know if that helped you, but I kind of had an idea that I knew I wanted to be three and a quarter inches wide because of the three and three quarter inch uh, basic white layer that was there and then I just kind of played around with it and dry fit things before I decided on the, the ultimate measurements. Uh, what do I use to cut my grid paper? I'm guessing you cut more than one piece at a time. Well, I am lucky that I have a giant um, industrial stack paper cutter so I can actually cut an entire hundred sheet pack of grid paper at once. However, the grid paper tears off the adhesive really, really easily. So you could actually do probably three or four sheets at a time on the paper trimmer. And if you had a little bit more heavy duty paper trimmer like the Carl cutter, you could do more than that. Um, but yeah, I do have a heavy duty one that I cut the whole thing at once, but um, they're real easy to tear off and then cut a few at a time. Um, it only comes in red rubber, Jane. Zany Zoo, I think they, they trialed and errored, it was trial and error in the mini catalog offering stamp sets in both photopolymer and uh, red rubber or cling, but um, there's no choices in the catalog um, as far as photopolymer versus red rubber. They come in one or the other now. <laughs> I love this. You guys crack me up. One will see you later and the other after a while. That would have been a good joke for Nolan to tell. Jane, hopefully you heard my answer to the question a little bit earlier in the Q&A. So if you go to the paperpixie.com slash catalogs, you can get all the information about how you can get a catalog from me. Um, when you place an order of $25 or more with me, you automatically get an email uh, with a link to request your catalog. That's one of the perks of being one of my VIP customers. You can also cover shipping if you don't plan to place an order quite soon. Okay. When you store your plates on the machine that way, is it a tight fit with constant pressure on the machine? Um, not, not too much of a tight fit. That's kind of just always how I've stored my plates um, in the machine just to kind of keep things out of the way. Um, it doesn't seem to affect the machine, or at least not in my experience. How do you get the spiral in your catalog? So, um, I actually have a coil, what is it called? Binder. A coil binder? I think so. Yeah. I actually, because I'm an office supply nerd, I actually bought one of those for myself, but I used to historically always take my catalog to... Um, staples and then I switched to taking it to the FedEx office office print and ship center I forget what they're called but it's the FedEx um, the FedEx place um, some places don't like to coil I've, or at least I've heard this from you guys some places don't like to do the coil binding of the catalogs because of the adhesive on the spine because they do need to cut the spine off to a certain degree in order to um, punch the holes and then coil bind the um, catalog, but it makes such a difference because your catalog lays flat. Um, I've heard prices anywhere from $5 to $10, um, but I definitely recommend it if you've got an office supply store near you that will do it for you. It's not too much money and it's definitely worth the price. Can you explain how the stamp and dies work with the Country Inn Suite? You know what, Sherry, I have not played with the stamp set on that. Um, other than I do know with the dies, you can either cut the full shape. I don't think, I, since um, I've been out of town for um, a while and working on things with my dad's memorial service, I actually haven't had a chance to unbox everything and organize it and store it, so I don't have those at the ready really quickly to show you. Um, but it is a layering set of dies, which means you can either create frames or cut full shapes. And it's sort of the same thing with the stamp set. The stamp set is coordinating with the dies as well. So you can either um, you know, cut each individual stamp. Now, the shape of it is, it's not oval, but it's, oh gosh, it's they're kind of one, two, three, four, five. It's, 
octagonal. <laughs> They're octagons, but they've got the long sides and just the little kind of cut off edges. Um, it might be helpful if I showed you in the catalog here to see if I can explain it a little bit better. 62. All right, so this is what Sherry is asking about, page 62 of the annual catalog. And you'll see here, it is basically a nesting set of dies and you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different dies. And each of these can cut out the full shape here or you can layer them to create frames. And same thing with the stamp sets as well. Most of these um, really are, I think they're all, you know what, this is gonna bug me, hold on. Let's see if I can find that stamp set. Because if one of you has the question, I know other of you have the question. Okay, so countryside corners. Again, I've never used this. So this is all one stamp. And then the dies. These are the dies. So all the dies are separate. So you're gonna, you can stamp it once, but you're gonna get all of the frames here. And then what you can do to create frames with the stamp set is layer, I'm gonna to try to do this on the, the stamp set itself. But if you layer like this, see how you'd be left behind with the stamped frame? And then as you build any of these, they're gonna basically cut frames. I know they're not lining up exactly because I'm showing you the back side of the dies, but like so. So one stamp, separate dies, and the stamp is really to create frames. But there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't stamp this whole stamp because that would be a beautiful background as well. Okay, so hopefully that helped you, Sherry. All right, let's come back to this. What colors were used on the watercolor card on page 85? Let's see. I'm gonna be guessing at this, but I can look at the supply list. Um, Sharon, if you'll email me. Ooh. I'm gonna to have to look at the supply list for that, Sharon. If you think about it, email me at support at the paperpixie.com and I will look that, look that up on the supply list for you and get back to you, okay? She's asking about this, this card right here. Where is the video for the blends box? Oh, Brian's already on top of it, thank you. I will be packing lots of layers, Enika, yes. <laughs> um, we, Brian and I are cold all the time anyway, so we usually have layers even here in Atlanta. So yes, we'll be packing all kinds of layers, including our rain jackets for the trip to Norway. Oh, Charlene, thank you. <laughs> Can you email me at support at thepaperpixie.com and let me know which punch it is so then I can look up your order and I'll reach out to Stampin' Up! for you. Thank you. Is it called a ruby coil? Um, no, Mary. Actually, if you go to my favorites page, thepaperpixie.com slash favorites, in the packaging section of my favorites page, I did link, I, I wanna say it's called Truebind. I think is what it is. Now I purchased the one with an electric coiler. I don't use it at all. So don't waste your money on electric coiler. It's not worth it. It's really easy to hand screw in the coil into your catalog. Um, so don't spend the money on the electric version, but I think it's called Truebind and you'll see it linked on my favorites page. That yes, that one. Brian's looking it up. Truebind. Truebind coil binding machine. And does it have a model number? Nah, but it's linked on my favorites page. Oh, I got that, Mary. So true bind. TB S twenty. TB S is in Sam twenty. Have ever made a post-it note cover? I have Lisa, but for the mini post-it notes. 
Um, that is linked on, can you go ahead and look up, um, it's a recent one, so if you go to the, go, just go to blog at the top in the menu. Oh, where is the menu? There you go. And keep scrolling until you find the random acts of kindness. Right there. If you want to drop that link in the chat. Um, that's for the mini post-it notes. You might be looking for the three by three post-it notes, but I've got a mini one for you. Oh, good. So Rachel Tessman demoed the countryside set on her live stream this morning. Thanks, Deb. Great. All right. I am at the end of the Q&A here. So thank you guys so much for joining. Hold on. I can't. I'm so bad about my comments. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you had a fun time with me tonight and that the Q&A was helpful for you and you enjoyed tonight's projects. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. That helps us here on YouTube. I will be live again next Wednesday for episode 282 of Live with the Paper Pixie. I hope you guys have a wonderful and blessed week. Happy new catalog week. We're new with the 2023 to 2024 annual catalog. Lots of great, wonderful new products and colors to choose from. You can shop with me at thepaperpixie.com slash shop. I hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next Wednesday. Take good care. Bye.